Well, today we're on the sea. <clears throat> so what I've got is a uh, board of uh, eastern white pine, which for those of you who aren't Windsor chair makers know that that was the preferred seat material in 18th century. There was other woods that were used and uh, <clears throat> I even used some other woods. Poplar uh, would be would be one. But uh, but I prefer single boards of eastern white and that's almost what all of my all of my seats are, at least in my traditional chairs. Uh, so that's what we got here. A little bit of bluing right here that comes from I think I think that comes from cutting it in the summertime and uh, and uh, it doesn't get dried fast enough. It doesn't hurt anything, just the looks, and we're painting it. So that's the way you think we paint them for. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, go over the board just a little bit with you. You can see growth rings are running like that. So here's the bark side. Here's the pith side. Uh, boards, especially wide boards like this, will try to cut that direction. The way you remember that is they try to straighten out the, the growth rings. This one has dried exceptionally flat. Um, so that's great. Don't have to mess with uh, with trying to take the crown out of it. Uh, <clears throat> planing direction. So here we are on the uh, on the bark side. You can see the cathedrals are running like that. Planing direction is like that. And when we get out to the edges, it could change depending on how it's been sawn, but my plane will, will pick that up and tell me. <clears throat> Just the opposite over here on the, on the pith side, cathedral is running like that, planing direction is like that right there. Now, which side would we, uh, would we carve from? Uh, if I'm painting a chair, I typically carve from the pith side. If I'm not painting a chair, I'll carve from the bark side. Now the reason why you carve from the bark side, it's prettier. You get a, that's the way it'll look in the seat right there. You carve from the uh, pith side and it will look <clears throat> like that. Still nice, but not quite as nice as this one over here. Uh, <clears throat> so why would I carve from the pith side anytime? The reason why is because the board attempts to cut this way. Okay. When I'm carving this seat, I'm opening up end grain, which is the way moisture is exchanged in the wood through its through its end grain. If there's a little bit of excess moisture in the wood in relationship to the um, environment, so in other words, the board. It's not that the board has not reached EMC, it's that the environment's always changing and it takes a little while for the board to keep up with that. So in November, for instance, uh, you could have a cold snap and it might be, with that stove going, it might be 25% uh, relative humidity in here, which would be 5% EMC for the board or there, thereabout, and the board might be at 10% at that time. So as soon as you start carving, it's going to start trying to equalize and when it does that, it can cut. If I carve from this side, I'm at least countering the natural tendency of the wood to cut this way. Okay, so that's, that's why. And that's the only reason. You can carve from either side you want. So, it's a long explanation for that. So, first thing I'm going to do is to flatten the, uh, the pith side. Uh, I usually start with the pith side because the cup's that way and it sits on its little feet out there, raise up the dogs, and let's get my, I start out with a scrub plane right here, and uh, since this thing's pretty flat, I don't know, I don't even think I'm going to start out with my scrub plane, because it's as flat as it is. I think I'm going to go straight to this one, but before we do anything, let's clean it. cross grain when you want to remove a lot of material because 
the wood has no strength that way. You can take deep cuts. Let's see if I can get a little bit more off of this. switch to here is uh, just a low angle joiner plane. It's got a slightly cambered blade on it for cutting heavy. Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice plane to be using here, but I got it as a present and it works just great for this and that's why I use it. If I didn't have this, I'd just use this one right here that I made years ago, but uh, this one, this one just really flattens it and works nice. So we'll just continue on. out there not only did the board dry flat but there's no twist to it at all let's see how I'm doing here not really nice hey well I think I can smooth plane it now but as you can see from my earlier directions I've got it turned around the wrong way I'm going to take a light pass with it with this joiner before I... So as you hear, I got it a little low in the middle and this thing's flattening it out now. It would have taken a long time for my smoothing plane to have done that. Okay. So, go to the smoothing plane here. That awful heavy. I can back her up a little bit. Still a little heavy. One side smooth, flat, no wind, and now I'm going to take marking gauge and mark it to one seven eighths. And 
now I've got a uh, quarter inch to take off, so I'm going to go with the scrub plane here. And I go diagonal with the scrub plane. changed on me right there. up in here. Well that's a workout but <clears throat> it's the only way to get it there. Um, so I finished up with a jack plane with a uh, cambered blade on it. So it's the bottom and the bottom will end up slightly uh, scalloped. So uh, we're ready to move on. So here's my pattern. We're going to move it up this way and put the tail back here. The only defect on this that I can see is this. It doesn't go very deep, but I can avoid it anyway. And if I couldn't, I could carve right through it. Um, so I found the center, and you can see we got plenty of room there, about a 30 second on either side. That's the low spot on the sweep on the front. <clears throat> There's the gutter. There's the one inch depth carving hole. Rear leg and front leg. And uh, now we'll flip it over. <coughs> As you saw, that pattern didn't have a tail on it. So this is my loop back pattern. Looks like I need to make a new one. I'll do that one day. And uh, so let's line this tail up. See if I can do that. Right there. Thing around. Like that. 